All right, we are back again for another PTO Leader Talk. And today we are going to be talking about everybody's favorite topic, fundraising. <laughs> With me today is Karen Joyce. I am Christina Heideck of PTO Answers. And we are about to nerd out on fundraising because it's oh so pleasant. <laughs> but I guess to say, Karen, I want to talk about how we can have the best fundraiser. So fundraising, Karen, what, what are your feelings about school fundraising for your PTO? Do you love it or are you like? I, I kind of love it and I didn't <laughs> think I would love it, but there's something about a very contained event because I feel like fundraisers, especially nowadays when people are doing more fun runs and things like that, they're more interactive. They are an event and they're very canned and I love numbers. I love to watch the back end as a fundraiser brings in the money and you're like, ooh, look like it's so exciting because we're going to get to do things with it. Um, yeah, I I never thought I would, but I really kind of love it. It's a little a little nook of granny that I'm like, oh, this is so important and it scares people away. But um, and that's that's, un, you know, understandable. But I think when you break it down to like you're not reinventing the wheel. You're finding like something that hits well with your parents that they find value in to support things that they also want. And when you really work with that mission, I think people jump on board and it's really kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Yeah, I think I think it can be. And it is it does come back to the concept. Like okay. I think the the more experiential fundraisers are always really good versus just the straight up product sales. Uh, I think. I always tell people like if it's don't fix what's not broken, like don't even look at it. If it's working, do it. And you'll know if it's working. If you look at your numbers and look at how many people are involved and how much money you're bringing in, you're going to realize when it goes stale and that you need to switch things up. Like we had this one product fundraiser, which we added on. I don't even know how that came to be. I was at fundraising chair at the time, but there was this company that offered like tote bags and different kind of bags. So, you know, women, we, we love a good bag. So we added it on as like a spring fundraiser and we raised like $6,500 and it was like almost no work. And for a spring fundraiser, that was like, wow, like, okay. Yeah. So we thought next year we're like, well, let's do it again because it was so well received. Well, that time it only raised like $3,500. Mm -hmm. Okay. But still that just like, it was additional, uh, additional money that we didn't, we weren't counting on. It was like kind of not bonus. It was going to get used, but it wasn't like essential to making, like we were going to have to do budget cuts or yeah, like program cuts right. to, to balance the budget sort of thing. But then you're like, it's losing steam. And then I think the next year after that was like $2,500. And then it was like, okay, we, this has run its course, take a break for a couple of years, and then you can bring it back because if it was good once, then, you know, won't be good. Right. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to that, that either concept choice or product choice. Cause if people don't want to do it or don't want it, then your fundraising yeah. isn't going to go off. Yeah. I would say that we've had more problems with competing fundraisers. And I know at the high school level, mm -hmm. I'm sure you deal with this with the boosters, but I've been surprised school level wise that they want to run fundraisers that either compete with our concept. So like a cash fund drive, parents don't want to give 20 bucks this week and now 20 bucks again this week for nothing. And so trying to figure out those nuances of what type of a fundraiser will work well in conjunction with the other things that are going on is such an important yeah. piece of that puzzle. Yeah, yeah. Well, that comes back to our, we've had this conversation before about planning, right? So it's yeah. important to share your plans and look at what other groups are doing. Um, we don't, at the high school level, we don't have so much of a problem with other, like the school trying to fundraise. The boosters kind of don't have their act together, so it's not that big of a problem. <laughs> yeah. But it uh, certainly, I know at the upper elementary school, the principal there like didn't get it and wanted to run a fundraiser. And we're like, you're competing with us. We're we're chasing after the same dollars. Why don't we do it together? You're still going to get money from us. Like, right. do you know you get this money from us? Like, do we need to share this budget or write you the check for the? Because I think at that school, just like we do at the high school, we just give the president like or the principal rather a chunk of money. It's like our oh our principal gets three thousand dollars a year, I think. So we just write him a check. It's like use it for however you however you want. Wow, that would be amazing. We have so many state 
things that we like that is not okay for our groups that we have to show a paper trail we can't even reimburse a staff member and write them a check everything has to be tied to an exact expenditure with a paper trail from a pta member and not even an employee why so, can't they just write you um a, a list like of why what they the principal write you a list of what they anticipate they'll do it because then we don't have um like we don't have an invoice to go with that expenditure that's not your problem though i don't think that's correct i would i would push back on that one because i don't you know where the money's going it's going to the principal <laughs> right but we can't just cut a check to the school because then they don't then there's not an oversight of where did the pta spend that money in terms of their budget i don't know I, that's a separate conversation that we need to have because i don't yeah. i don't think that's certainly not an irs requirement so that may have been their invention and you might be able to go no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so i'm good at like that makes no sense because it so the reason we moved to the lump sum was because the principal was coming i want 30 30 336 dollars for a pancake breakfast Right. I want this, and it was like, we were spending so much on checks because business checks are expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, they are. It's just like in the, the time and making sure it got to the right person and all that. So it was easier. It was like how we came to the lump sum, especially for that elementary school was we added up everything they'd asked for, for the last year that we were able to fund. Mm -hmm. That's how much they got. <laughs> just, we just rounded up and just thought, here you go. And we said, we were very explicit. This is for A, B, C. And they're like, cool. It's easier for them too. Cause then they have yeah. it and they don't have to worry about it. So for sure. That, that is interesting, but back to fundraising. So that's yeah. a bookkeeping issue back to fundraising. So what everyone wants to know what products specifically mm -hmm. they should be doing. Do you, do you have an opinion on specific products? See, and I know that you have a background in this and I really want to do the fundraiser that I think you found a nightmare. I want to sell pasta so bad. <laughs> I want to sell all the kinds of pasta. I think it would go gangbusters at our school. It, it might. And I think it just depends on your tolerance level. Like my, the, they might do it different now. So if you haven't, heard the story about the fun shape pasta let me just tell you this is always my go-to example because it was like like we were laughing in the moment about how horrible it was like and how this was ridiculous so here's the story so the i was a new a first time volunteer and or first year i think i was a kindergarten parent with my oldest in in kindergarten and so the fundraising chair had decided to do like the fun shape pasta well the pasta orders came in and none of the orders were sorted they were sorted by pasta type which is easier for the fundraising company of course because then they can just send us 16 ballerina pastas and you know five soccer pastas and music pastas and hot chili pepper pastas and all all the kinds right but mm -hmm. we had to manually sort them and because the school is like kind of well used i should say like all the spaces are well used we were in the teacher's lounge with all of these boxes like this size like it would be like technically a small not the super small amazon box but like the first i guess medium size the smaller medium size one all of those laid out and we were they were all it was covering almost the entire floor and we were parkouring around the room picking orders and i was like this is banana pants it was like it, honestly it was ridiculous and maybe if we had more space but like mm. that's how they decided to do it and i don't know if it was a fundraising chair anyway that one i just was like no this is crazy and i hate this <laughs> see, I, I i would see that maybe also like i've got young kids like i would think that that would be like i'm sorry i gotta go you're gonna keep the kids at home i'm gonna have a night out and we're gonna go and we're gonna pick pasta like to me that's like a night out that's probably saying a lot for my social life but like <laughs> I, I think that sounds like a ton of fun, like getting together and, and picking and, and sorting. And I don't know. I just, it was bonding in misery. 
But see, I think that would go so well here. Like the sports process and stuff like that. That is on my radar of like, I'm going to, I've tried to sell it to two groups and they both all agreed that it would be a great idea, but we already had a big fundraiser that it brought in a ton of money and we didn't really need it. And so yeah. you have to kind of know when to stop that too, because you're not just there to bankroll and, and create sure. some big, like, what do we want to do? We've got enough money to do it. Okay, we're good. So yeah. Yeah, how my group usually has rolled, not for the high school, because the high school, we raise all of our money through concessions for the, like, big PTA stuff. And then the after prom committee, senior celebrations committee, whatever you want to call it, they do separate fundraising for that. Because um, the PTA funds a portion of, like, they give them, like, $3,000 a year, $2,000 a year, and then we have to raise the rest. And it's, like, $15,000 for everything. So it's a big chunk of change. Um and the a bulk of it, a lot of it comes from the ticket sales from the kids. So we're, it's everything subsidized. I digress. So we just don't have the same need for product fundraisers at the high school because we have the athletics concessions kind of already built in. But we would, for all the other groups it, or all the other schools, we would do like a big fundraiser in the fall mm -hmm. and then would supplement with something smaller in the spring if, if needed. Sometimes we totally needed it because parents were checked out or the fundraising chair, like one year, the fundraising chair just totally was like, I don't know why this did not work. I don't know. Maybe I didn't tell anybody. It's like, yeah, you didn't do anything. <laughs> it did not work. Um, she was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> we all had to sit around and like cut the budget. And we went around the circle and went, I can give up $300. I can give up this. And it was... That was the worst meeting, worst meeting. But anyway, we want to help you avoid that by picking the very best fundraiser. Mm -hmm. I think that it, there's no secret sauce product. Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on your school community. You have to look at the economic factors. You have to look at what other groups are doing, other schools are doing. Like if the middle school is selling wrapping paper, then the elementary school, do not sell wrapping paper. Pick something else sure. or pick an experience um, and do something different that the, the school is doing. Um, or the teachers are doing, or the, the principal is doing, whatever. But then I think really think you have to look at the profit margin too, because let's say that pasta fundraiser had like a 60% profit margin, which I know it doesn't, because <laughs> usually food is about 50% and everything else is between 25 and 40% generally. Um, you know, you have to make sure it's worth your time to do it. Because if you're only, if you're hustling for 10% of the profits, nope. I don't yeah. think that's a fair trade for your time. Agree. And we, we that takes us back. We talked about box tops, like those passive things, even those yeah. are not worth your time. I mean, if it's totally cranking in the background, then that's great. Um, I know that we've like gone to Spiritware, that's an on-demand company and it direct ships to parents. And so mm -hmm. that has taken, you know, a little bit off of us and we get some income that kind of comes through. But yeah, how much time does it take and how many volunteers do you have to make that work is, is yeah. a huge huge piece of what to pick and what works for your group that may or may not work for others. Right, right. And so individualized. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is fundraising companies can, the other reason I don't like to typically recommend a specific company for things is that it depends on the representative. So you might have a rep for a cookie sale person in California that is like a rock star and they're really great with communication, which is another thing you should look at. Like, is your person a good communicator? Are they good? Um, are they a good salesperson? Are they going to be able to come in and do an assembly to whip the kids up into a frenzy's excitement to win over whatever tchotchke you're giving away for an incentive? Or are they lame and checked out? Like they could have a really good person in California, but in Vermont be total lameness. So I don't want to make a national like recommendation. I've been really hesitant to do that with the product-based fundraisers. Right. Um, of course, one fundraising platform that I do recommend is Better World. I know I've talked to you about that before just because they're their platform offers such flexibility that you can that you can run different types of fundraisers on the platform if you want to do like peer to peer so you can pick class versus class or kid versus kid to see who can raise the most money you can run um offer ticket sales like a gala you can offer product sales so there's it's super flexible and the nice thing is that you actually get to keep all of the money that's raised um so you don't have to pay like a stinking platform fee or anything like that. So that's a great one. Awesome. Had, I love the continuity of that too, that it, that parents can use one type of interface and kind of know, okay, we use this for ticket sales. We use it for this. We use it for a fun run. And it's not, 
you know, what it, the little thing like log on to Blorbity Bloop and go to the this app. And, you know, it, it's a little bit more streamlined and people can, you know, take away at least that barrier of I don't know where to go or what to do. And it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. I've used it a couple times this year. I used it for after prom. We did like a lottery raffle fundraiser and then the um, science, a biology class. Well, it's anybody who took honors biology, I think, for as freshmen, sophomores or juniors are going to Costa Rica next spring. There's like 48 kids going. Anyway, they used it. They use Better World as a platform for their calendar fundraiser. So it went really nice. well, but PTA actually hosted it for them because uh, they needed a platform. And I said, oh, we already have that set up. It'd be super easy. So um, yeah, and then also like the time involved, like I think you touched on that before. So if it's, I think things have changed now because it used to be that companies, their online presence wasn't very good, but I think the pandemic kind of changed that. So I've noticed that the interfaces are much better to where mm -hmm. you are not personally having to enter in orders. Like yeah. I remember getting a stack of order forms and having to put them on there. And then I am, I'm not officially dyslexic, but I swap numbers a lot. Like I will flip flop things. Yeah. Tired, busy. I, I do it with numbers all the time. Cause I'm just not good with numbers, I guess. Um, but now if parents are going on and ordering individually and it's just getting shipped, then it's eliminating the time, your time to enter in things and your time to handle your receipt of the products and make sure it gets to the right person. Yeah. Cause you always have that one person who doesn't pick up, even though you've said you need to pick up <laughs> like here's right. pickup night, you know, it, when you, you place the order and yet you're still not coming. So, uh, um, we're not a warehouse. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And then look at also delivery time, like how fast the company can get things out, especially if it's like a holiday fundraiser. I know there's a, the high school, there's a, oh, it's not our community because we don't have a hockey team, unfortunately anymore, but a neighboring community, their hockey team every year sells greens and like garlands and wreaths at the holiday time. Yes. So you, of course, that is very seasonal and timely. And so you have to make sure that the company is able to deliver the quantity that's ordered on time so time. that your peeps can have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to work if they, it's delivered, you know, January 1st. It's going to be too late. <laughs> yeah. that That's happened with us with Spirit Wear. And thank goodness that that's like something you can kind of backtrack but people had ordered it for holiday gifts wasn't in and that was that was a situation we had to deal with so yeah finding a reputable company that can fulfill on their time timeline is super important yeah i think that was probably that is very similar to what another friend of mine locally she had the same thing they ran in spirit wear i think it was two years ago is that when you had a problem yeah it was just coming out of the pandemic and i think part yeah. of it was supply chain which exactly. i understand but they didn't communicate that to us so we couldn't communicate it to parents and then at the end of the day who do parents complain to us not to the company so right. trying to right. protect your group from as much of that as possible is going to make your better your fundraiser better and then them want to support your endeavors later on because they know you've got your act together and you're using reputable people etc sure sure yeah all right well i think that is um another good conversation about fundraising and it's so important to get this right because your group can just run into money trouble and you can't run into the black so or can't run into the red rather <laughs> you have to stay in the black because you can't yeah. borrow money so it's always good to keep these in, in mind so karen thank you so much for being here again today i really enjoyed our conversation i hope all of you watching enjoyed our conversation and you will join us for the next video want even more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better pto or pta all these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com